Hey guys, here's my first impression of the Super Tenere 1200 versus my previous 2019 Africa Twin standard version. I don't like wasting your time, so let's get to it. Right off the bat, I must say the Africa Twin has been absolutely flawless. I have ridden the bike in dirt, gravel, rain, snow, salt-covered rough roads, and after 30,000 kilometers, it still looks and runs like new. I've had it for three years, and that's the longest I've kept any bike so that says a lot right there. I just had the big tune-up done before selling it and the mechanic was impressed with how clean the engine was. There was no carbon deposits or anything. One or two valves were just slightly out of spec, so they were adjusted. Coolant was flushed, air filters replaced, the $20 iridium spark plugs were also replaced for a total of $1,000 Canadian. If there's one place Honda could improve, it's regarding the maintenance schedule and ease of maintenance. Honda's recommended 24,000 km valve check is something you would expect from an Italian bike. And even then, the new Multistrada V4 only requires a valve check every 60,000 km. I could replace my air filter and four spark plugs on my 91 Nighthawk 750 before you could take the plastics off the Africa. As a bonus, the Nighthawk has hydraulic valve lifters, so no valve adjustment required, ever. Just like on the Harley Pan America. And that's about all the negative I could think of for the Africa Twin. It's fun, torquey, sounds great with a slip-on. It's versatile, comfortable, and it will handle two-up touring as well as serious off-roading. It's not the lightest or fastest or most equipped, but it does a lot of things extremely well and all that on regular gas. So let's compare with my new leftover 2021 Super Tenere. Here are my initial thoughts after only 150 kilometers in the saddle. Let's start with the looks. I give a slight advantage to the Africa Twin. It looks angrier and sharper. For a 2010 design, the Super Tenere has aged well, but while the Africa looks angry, the Tenere looks friendly. Maintenance. The Yamaha is the clear winner here. You can go nearly twice the distance between major tune-ups and as a bonus it has a drive shaft instead of a chain. I also prefer how the side panels are removed compared to the Africa Twin, you are less likely to break a plastic tab. Reliability. I expect the Yamaha to be as reliable as the Honda, so they both get the top scores here. Engine. They are both parallel twins with a 270 degree crank, so no surprise that they have similar characteristics a lot of torque off the line, and the music projected at the back is comparable. It's subjective, but I think both bikes sound like an Austrian or even an Italian V-twin once fitted with a proper exhaust. If you leave it stock, well, it's not the most exciting sound. The Africa has less power but also less weight, so they are pretty well matched. Well maintained, both engines should keep a smile on your face for over half a million kilometers easy. Comfort. Here it gets tricky. In many areas, the Super Tenere is better. It has a better seat, better windscreen, cruise control, heated grips, it's heavier, more stable, has a bit more leg room. But when the going gets rough, the Africa soaks up the bumps better. If the Super Tenere would soak up the harsh stuff as well as the Africa, it would be the clear winner. But for now, I'd have to say it's a tie, or at least the verdict is out on that. Keep in mind I'm 6'1", 200 pounds, and where I live, dirt roads are often smoother than the paved roads, so I'm aware for many, out of the box, the Super Tenere will feel like a magic carpet. Off-road capability. Here, there's no debate possible. Though the Super Tenere can certainly handle some off-roading, it's carrying an 80-pound penalty and also has a 19-inch front wheel instead of the Africa's 21-inch. Though both bikes are plenty capable, the Africa Twin is definitely the better one off-road. Touring, on-road. Surveys indicate that most adventure bikes spend a large portion of their lives touring on-road because of their suspensions, their ergos, their wind protection, their equipment. Here I'd say both bikes are really good, but if we put the worst of roads aside, I'd give a slight advantage to the Super Tenere simply because of the equipment, drive shaft, and stability. Features. There's no competition here. The Super Tenere wins all day long. Here's what was included on my 2021 ES model. Combined ABS and traction control, though I have to admit 
The traction control on the Africa Twin is more sophisticated and it also allows you to disable the rear ABS, which the Tenere doesn't. Uh, it also has adjustable seat, like on the Africa Twin, adjustable windscreen, terrible mechanism. I'll have to show you a clip here. but at least it's adjustable. Just don't expect to be able to adjust it while you're riding. It's barely adjustable when you're not riding. Electronic suspensions. Aluminum side cases. Again, terrible mechanism. Careful not to break your key, but hey, they're included. And I'll include an example here of how it went. These side cases, uh, they were a good idea. Let me just try to open the mechanism here. I hope it's in frame. So you have that. You have this handle that you have to turn like this. Then you align that on the top. There you go. And then you rotate this like that. You can't push it in because you have to hold this one while you push the rear in. So I push it. Once you clip the front like that, now you can let go the other hand. That one stays there. And so to remove the key, turn it upright like that. To open the side case, turn it right. To shut it close, you have to turn the key, push on it. And this is about as smooth as it's ever gone. Uh, it has a center stand, which is super useful, especially when you want to uh, adjust the uh, suspensions it requires that you put the bike on the center stand for the uh, preload uh, to avoid putting unnecessary stress on the uh, suspension motors uh, then you have the cruise control which uh, works like a charm uh, it might even save you a few speeding tickets it also comes with engine modes here I have to say the engine modes on the Africa twin are more customizable and personally I'd be happy with just one mode if it was great the touring mode is smoother, but throttle response is not perfect and the amount of play in the throttle grip doesn't help. The sport mode is much more fun and you really get the, the full power of the engine, but the on-off impression is amplified by that. They should have just made one mode that gives you all the power with a more progressive on-off feel and a grip that feels a bit more premium. And it also comes with the drive shaft, obviously, and a 12 volt plug. Value for money. Hard to find a loser here. Both bikes offer exceptional value for the price and it really depends on what you plan on doing with the bike. If you're really more off-road focused, the Africa Twin is definitely a better bike. And if you're more into touring and riding on the streets, uh, the Super Tenere is probably a better proposition even though the Africa Twin is still excellent in those regards as well. Fit and finish. Well, they're both Japanese bikes. What else can I say? It doesn't feel premium, but they are certainly well put together. And uh, based on my Africa Twin after 30,000 kilometers, I can attest that uh, they do age well. Uh, I don't have any rust or oxidation or fading in the plastics or anything. So uh, I would expect the same thing from the uh, Yamaha. Technology. Both of these bikes don't really compete with the latest and greatest in terms of tech, but in my case, that's actually a good thing. The more electronic gizmos you have, the more likely they are to fail at some point. Even the newer Africa Twins probably have more electronics than I would like, though I do like how customizable their electronic suspensions are. So there you go. Those are my thoughts so far. I'll post an update once I've managed to put 10,000 kilometers on the Super Tenere. Let me know in the comments if you own one or both of these bikes, which one you prefer and why. Thanks for watching and ride safe.